Hello everyone, and welcome back to NL582, Modeling and Control of Electric Machines on Drives. And here is our last lecture. And we're trying today to get a quick overview about stepper motors. So, I think you've heard a lot about stepper motors before, even talking about it as the most common one to be used in robotics, maybe. So I think you just, I think you have heard of it, and based on all the principles we've already learned in this course, it's a little bit convenient to actually try to discover the internal construction and the theory of operation of such motors to just gain a better understanding of its performance when you can use it after this for any control purposes or robotics applications and now you can understand what's happening inside. So we're gonna talk about stepper motors I'm gonna just start by saying this kind of motor it is designed to be rotating in a precise steps okay so it is used for low torque applications requires precise position control okay so you go with stepper motors most of the time if you want a precise position control of your application for example we're talking about a robot or something and you want this robot to keep walking to a specific distance then you go with stepper motors because you can easily calculate this using this position control of the motor. Actually, you can use other motors like three phase and action motors, for example, but for this, you will need a feedback control. Remember, when I talked about closed loop control of this, uh, sorry, the closed loop control of speed control of the three phase and action motor. And we said we use a sensor to measure the speed of the motor and just feed it back to the control system to decide the um, control action to do to just restore the speed back to the values required by you as a controller but using a stepper motor actually you don't need to do this because it's actually designed to be just going into a precise position from its own so it's very good attractive for this kind of applications okay so i'm gonna say that this is attractive for robotics and other servo applications okay and other applications you want a precise control over the speed and the position and you don't need to go with complicated closed loop systems okay okay the other thing so yeah it's it's the very good advantage of this motor is to have a very good precise position control okay in addition the direction of rotation can be controlled in an easy way okay but the whole thing to be just having in mind here, it is required, or sorry, it requires, so yeah, it requires power electronic driving circuit, okay? So you cannot just plug it and play, okay? You cannot just plug it to a three phase source. And it will work like three phase induction motor or other synchronous motor maybe or just a single phase like single phase induction motor no it has to be just using power electronic driving circuit and it will not work without it just using a regular source okay and that's actually a disadvantage for it but yeah everything comes as a price you know so stepper motors has two types you have two types for it the reluctance type 
and the permanent magnet PM, yeah, type. And I will just talk about each one of them in turn to just see how it works, okay? So I'm gonna start here with the reluctance type stepper motor. Okay, let me give you um, a photo for the uh, internal construction for this motor. Okay, this one. So yeah, this is how the motor looks inside. Okay, so the outside here, there is stator that has those different pulls here, okay. So yeah, those are the stator pulls and this is your rotor pull or just this is your rotor okay and yeah so the rotor just like any other kind of a model rotates inside the stator like that okay it's how this construction so as you see in here the stator is just having different pulls like you see in here and each phase here so you just find so yeah, for this example, so actually it's not exclusively for any kind of a reluctance type stepper motor or looks, looks like how much pulls like you've seen here. So the pulls can vary, but it's still the same principle, okay? So for example here, the stator has six phases and each phase has two poles. So can you see here that is phase A and that is A dash so that's two poles of the same phase that means they are connected in series okay so the coil A and the coil A dash are connected in series so they are just belongs to the same phase but the two different poles you know what I mean uh, also the other phase is the B phase so you have another B here the blue one here that is B and that is B dash also they're the same phase but two poles so B and B dash are two poles but they're connected in series so they belong to the same phase that means you can just excite them together give them current voltage electric voltage together because they're just connected in series okay the same thing going along with the other phases that is C and that is C dash again they belong to the same phase and then that is yeah, D and that is D dash and E E dash F F dash okay so I'm saying so there are six different phases that means they are separately they are not connected together that's why i'm saying there are six phases okay when i'm saying six phases i mean six different winding requires six different excitation sources i'm talking here not it's, it's not about having six different voltage sources or something but that need that means you have to just excite them separately because they are not connected together in any way it's just like the three phase induction model where you have three different winding that means we need three phases of voltage to excite them okay it's the same idea here the rotor like you see in here okay the rotor is salient pull type with two poles so that the whole point here you have two poles that's a pole okay and that's a pole because that's in the salient type like you see in here salient type that doesn't mean it's not it's not a cylindrical type okay so it was like this the rotor was just a cylinder like that that we call cylindrical okay type or we call it sometime non salient rotor okay it's not the way we go with because we know it to be reluctance type that means we counting on the saliency torque so the rotor has to be salient otherwise this motor will not work okay but actually how this motor works in real life okay so for this position if you see in here I'm gonna see you the procedure of operation okay
Okay, for this one, I'm gonna say switch off supply of phase A and switch on supply of phase F router well attracted to poles of phase A uh, sorry phase F here and start rotating clockwise until it aligns with them see what I mean look here so here the rotor pole just if you just have a voltage applied to phase A that means phase A here will be turned into a magnet because you know that's an electric magnet now just electric current moving in a coil all have a magnetic field okay but if we switch off the voltage applied to A and switch on the voltage applied to F. So now those Fs, now A does not have any current moving into it. It does not, it's not anyways a magnet now. But for F now, it will be turned here to north and south poles. And this will attract those rotor poles towards it. So it will start rotating. So you will see it now taking this position okay just by attracting them you know what i mean did the same same idea if you want to keep it rotating clockwise like that so you will switch off this f voltage and apply voltage to phase e so now the curve just this rotor will continue rotation to this side because now e is the magnet that will attract the rotor to its position you know what i mean it is that easy Okay, that's what I'm saying here. To keep the router running clockwise, switch off supply of F and switch on supply of E, the rotor keeps rotating and keep going that's what I'm saying so you just do it like that now switch off E and switch on D the rotor will just go to be aligned with D and after that you switch off D and switch on C and how it is see what I'm saying Remember when I said that's very easy to actually make it go in another thing and another direction. What? So yeah, it's rotating here like clockwise. Why do you want to go anti-clockwise? So much easy. Rather than at the beginning here, you just switch it off A and switch it on F. No, you need just to switch on B rather than switch it on F. And then go in this direction. Switch on C, then D, then E, and the rotor will follow you wherever you go. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying, okay? So that's the whole point. So keep switching off and on the consequent phases on the direction you want to force the rotor to rotate in this or that direction okay guys it is that easy to understand how this kind of a motor actually work okay so let me say what are actually the pros and cons of this type of motor reluctance type motor like this okay so the pros of this kind of a motor 
the reluctance type over the other type, which is the permanent magnet we'll be talking about in a bit, it requires a simple power supply or say simple drive circuit. It's much convenient. Simple drive circuit. Okay. So it is cheaper. Okay, guys. What the kind of drive circuit that we need to use for this motor? How actually we can just design a circuit to drive this? Let me again take you. I'll just give you here a schematic of the drive circuit used for this kind of a motor. It's it that simple, okay? Okay. This is a driving circuit you can use actually. So the whole point is here, like you see, we just need a one DC supply. Make sure that you need just a DC source for this. But there's not an AC or something. You just need a voltage to be applied to these coils to make it like magnets and it will attract the rotor towards it. That's it. Okay? And just switch it off and switch on the next phase and the next and the rotor will just keep going towards it. So we don't need it to be AC or something, it's just a DC source like here. Okay? So what I'm saying is very simple because we need just one DC source for all the phases plus one switch for each phase. Like you see here, we need just one DC source. And you just switch for each phase. So if you want to switch on phase A, you just switch on this switch and now the voltage will be applied to phase A and the current will just go. The same idea. Now if you want to go to phase B, you just switch this off and switch this on and now the voltage will be applied to phase B and the current will go through it. And that easy. So that's why I'm saying it's a very simple circuit. You just need a DC source and a switch for each phase. And that's the power circuit actually. I just need to control it. And you have a controller just like the idea we did before with the speed control of induction motors using our just controller and power electronic circuit and that stuff. So the power circuit for this, very simple. We just need one DC source and one switch for each phase. And that's it. That means it's much simple and cheap in terms of having this, okay? So that is a very good thing about this kind of a motor. But what about the cons? Okay. The cons here is basically it has small torque. Okay, it does not develop so much big torque. Why? Because it just depends on saliency, which is what I mean here uh, the attraction between the excited stator phase and the salience poles of the rotor, okay? The whole point is, you just have not that much because you're just counting on here on the attraction force that happens between those electromagnets in the stator and the piece of iron, which is the rotor. The rotor is nothing but a piece of iron, you know what I mean? So the rotor is salient pole type with two poles you know, so no winding or permanent magnets, okay, just piece of iron. So the rotor of this, it's just a piece of iron. You don't have anything on the rotor, just a piece of iron. and when you just excite the stator winding it's just you create a magnetic pulls and this will attract this piece of iron like any magnet that attracts iron you know what i mean but this attraction force is not very high because you know it's just 
from coming from one way it's just one excitation in the stator and just trying to attract a piece of iron on the router and that's it you know what i mean and that takes us to talk about the other type which will just make a lot of sense when you just to try compare them together which is the permanent magnet stepper motor okay so yeah you know pm is permanent magnet okay so compared to the other one just the router was a piece of iron okay now the only difference is that you will have the router here to be a permanent magnet type okay guys so look at here it is the same like the other type but now you have pulls here in the router now that's a north pole and that is a south pole so you have just permanent magnets pools attached to the router one is a north pole and one is a south pole okay so the difference here is the difference here is that the router is not just a piece of salient iron but permanent magnet pools are attached to the router okay and why you are doing this the whole point is the permanent magnet provides more magnetic field added to the field coming from the excited stator phases okay and you know more magnetic field means more torque so this kind okay the permanent magnet type you have here more torque because you have permanent magnets not just the saliency of the router okay so that's the whole point permanent magnet provides more magnetic field added to the field coming from the excited stator phases and okay still there is saliency of the router which also contributes to torque okay it is just you have the same old motor here the salient type and just added permanent magnet to it so you have the original torque of the original motor but you have the added torque they will have by having the more added permanent magnets which will add more magnetic field and more magnetic field means torque the whole point is think of it like that if you're trying to now excite phase f to make the rotor just go in its direction sorry phase f okay rather than just having this phase f now turns into an electro magnet and trying to attract a piece of iron no it will now this guy has to be a south pole and this guy will be a north pole and now you have much bigger attraction here because now it's a south pole attracting a north pole two magnets trying to attach attract each other which will be a much higher attraction force compared to a magnet trying to attract a piece of iron you know what i mean guys and that's why we're talking about here you now have much higher torque okay so if your load requires higher torque to drag it it's a heavy load then you want to go with the permanent magnet type not the salient pool type okay but as i always say nothing comes without a cost okay so the whole thing to have in mind here is the problem is reversing the direction 
of rotation is no longer that easy because we have to control the direction of current in stator phases to set the proper magnetic pull I mean north or south you know what I mean look here previously and this reluctance type here guys we're not concerned about what this poles are if it is north pole or a south pole it doesn't matter south pole north pole because you're just relying on it's a magnet attracting a piece of iron which is the rotor so it, it will attract it to whatever this magnet is a north pole or a south pole it doesn't matter okay so if you just have any iron pieces nails and just make them close to a permanent magnet it will attract them whatever this permanent magnet pole is a north or a south pole but if we're talking about here now you have in permanent magnets in the rotor so this has to be south and this has to be north okay why because that is north and that is south in the rotor okay you know what i mean so if you want to go this direction you want to make sure this f pool is south and this is north if you want to go counterclockwise here you want to make sure now this b is south and this b is north and how you can just set the pool to be a south or a north this all happens to be with controlling its current okay so you have to control the direction of the current because you have to reverse the direction of the current if you want to get a different pool you know what i mean so the control it's not that easy anymore okay and that's why we are going into saying now you have a con here which is more complex driving circuit so the driving circuit for this kind of permanent magnet motor will be taken this schematic okay this one okay so like you see in here it's not that simple like the previous one why Rather than we need two power sources, okay, one is positive, one is negative, and that is the zero volt, okay? And you need for each phase two switches. More complex circuit, that I mean, so we need two DC sources for all stator phases plus two switches for each phase why because you need two switches because you want to control the direction of current so look for example to phase C or something okay so look at the phase C here okay if you switch on the um, higher switch of it so that's here switch so if you switch on this switch that is closed now that means you're connected the positive here so the current will go from here here going down there down and moves in this direction and then back from here to the zero volt and that's it so the current going in this direction lifts okay but if you want to go in the other way so you will switch on this one not this one okay and because that is negative so the current so the voltage of zero will be higher then the current will moving from the higher voltage here that way that way okay from here sorry that way so we'll go from this point down here and then the current will go right and then it will continue through the closed switch and back to the negative you know what I mean? 
So that's why we need this. We need two sources and two switches because we want to control the direction of the current, whether it's going right or going left, because we want to control the pool, which is being North Pole or South Pole, because the rotor has different poles. It does not just a piece of iron and any kind of a pool will attract it. No, we have to set a proper pool to just attract it to the way we want. You know what I mean? And that's why we need more complicated ones. And that will take us to talk about the pros and cons of the permanent magnet pipe. Okay? So number one, the cons here, or sorry, the pros here is higher torque. Okay? Compared to uh, reluctance type. Okay, like we said. The other thing is a nice thing which is higher holding torque. What I mean by that, it is just the permanent magnets in rotor will be attracted to its um, opposite or just sorry not opposite it's nearby stator phase even with no excitation at all on stator so it will hold its lost position after switching the motor off entirely you know because you have permanent magnet in the rotor so whether you just leave it in a position and a switch of the motor at all these permanent magnets will be attracted to the nearby phases and it will just keep in this position because it's attracting them you know what i mean so that's why we call it the holding torque so it's good because you want to have your motor just keep in position when it's switched off so you know when to start after we're trying to start the motor again i will not go anywhere it's more precise in terms of just having a more precise control you know what i mean okay okay those are your pros here what about the cons The problems here with this motor, uh, sorry, yeah, the other pros, yeah. The cons here, the problem with this motor is, number one, like we just said, it requires more complicated driving circuit, which is more expensive, you know. The other thing is the permanent magnet material is expensive in nature, you know what I mean? So overall the motor is more expensive in material and in the driving circuit. The permanent magnet is more expensive when you're talking just comparing it to the salient pole type or latmus type which is just a piece of iron which is fairly um, cheap compared to the permanent magnet material which is fairly expensive compared to them. So overall, the permanent magnet pipe is more expensive in terms of the construction using permanent magnet and also the driving circuit, which is more complicated. But like we said, you have much higher torque and higher holding torque, which is actually attractive for many other applications. So it's up to you. If you have an application that requires just low torque, that's not heavy load you need to drive or something, then you need to go the sail and pull type because it's more simple to control and more cheap okay if you have higher torque requirements for the load then you need to go the permanent magnet type and you have to just deal with the more complexity and the more expensive nature economy okay guys so that's what I need to talk about in the stepper motors actually just we have an overview about the motor how it works with its two different types and how actually the driving circuits work Again, there is much more complicated 
associated with each kind of this and if we are trying to model it and lock at it and all that stuff you can lock it up more in our recommended textbook if you need more information about it but for just a basic understanding of how the model goes and actually depending on the other principles that we have already covered throughout the course for the chalk production and the excitation and the magnetic fields movement inside the machine I think we can now understand what's happening inside it okay so talking about stepper motors actually we can talk about a very similar kind of a machine to stepper motors not a type of stepper motor it's a separate machine we call it switch it reluctance motor we get it as SRM okay when you try to look at the construction of this motor it will be looking very much similar to the stepper motor we just has like that here okay so that is how you can just look at it to the same same idea again you have pools in the stator phases so for example here we have three phases a b and c okay and the router is also selling pool okay so if you want to just talk about this here you'll say that the switch reluctance motor is i'll just have the same working principle of stepper motor with a significant change as it is designed for continuous rotation not steps like stepper motor the same idea but we here make a change in the design of the motor to make it more just um, tending to be continuously rotating the whole point is working just how this happens here actually is like yeah what I said just the rotor is salient pull like the reluctance type motor stepper motor okay the salient pull iron with no winding or permanent magnets okay so you don't have anything in the rotor but it's a piece of iron but it's salient pull type okay so it's pretty much like the reluctance type stepper motor but it's designed for continuous rotation and that's the major difference between the two types the stepper motor and the switch reluctance type okay guys how this is working the same same idea so for this if you want this guy here so look at this position if you want this motor to go clockwise so I will basically just um, excite phase B here so this will attract the pulls like this towards it and the rotor will start going this direction you know what I mean what if you want it to go anti-clockwise in this direction then rather than exciting B I will excite C this will attract the rotor from this position to this position so the rotor will go this way you know what I mean guys so that is a whole thing you kind of just see here why it's designed for continuous rotation because like you're seeing here it's not just two poles of the rotor all being attached to the poles of the stator and stay there unless you just excite the next phase of the stator but here actually like you can see for this position if the two poles of the rotor just here aligned with phase a like this the other pools of the rotor like here will be just between two phases it's not aligned with any phase and that will make it very easy to if you just excite this phase it will move towards it if you excite the other phase phase c it will move towards it you know what i mean so that's the whole point of this you will not have a position like the stepper motor like here or just have whole the rotor is aligned with this theater like this okay 
We need it like that because we want it to move as steps. That's why we designed it like that. So I will go and be aligned with phase A and just stay there until we excite the next phase. But for the stepper motor, sorry, switch reluctance motor here, no. Even if there's two poles here is aligned with phase A and staying there, the other two poles are not aligned with anyone, so they can rotate easily. They can go to the next one from this position or this position, this direction or this direction, sorry. So that's why it's much easier to just keep rotating rather than the stepper motor where it just will go in and steps. Okay, guys? So that's the difference here between the two types of the motor. To keep talking about this, you'll say that the switch reluctance motor provides high torque and rigid construction. Okay, why rigid construction? Because you know the rotor is a piece of iron, okay? no winding or permanent magnet so the moving part which is the rotor is just a piece of iron you're not so afraid if you just have a high speed that maybe the winding inside the rotor will just go out of the rotor or the permanent magnet just go out of their places and they're all problems but here no you don't need to be worried about anything because your moving part which is the rotor is just a piece of iron okay so it's so much rigid okay and relatively lightweight okay because again no winding or permanent magnet and the rotor Okay, you don't have the weight, the mass of these coils on the rotor or the permanent magnet. Okay, guys, so it is attractive for vehicles and aerospace applications. That's nice for that. Okay, you have fairly high torque with a very rigid, so it's good to go with those applications that requires very high speed, like vehicles or airspace applications. You need very high speed, so you don't need to worry about other things because you know the rotor is just a piece of iron. We don't need to worry about the thing. Okay, but still the problem of being salient pull rotor as noisy it is actually have high noise this is not a silent motor okay it's just noisy motor so it's not attractive for this type but it's good for other reasons you know okay so I need to say it requires power electronic driving circuit again it's just like the stepper motor cannot work directly from an AC source or a DC source it needs just circuits like we used before with the stepper motor to drive it because we need to just again switch on switch off the phases a B and C just in a consequent way to make it to make it work okay so yeah we cannot just use continuous supply like the three phase induction motor or something or a single phase induction motor even the DC motor and keep it working now it will not work like that okay it has to be switched off and on consequently from phase to the next phase to make the rotor just keep rotating you know what I mean okay so again that was a quick just introduction about switch reluctance motor it's very similar to the stepper motor that's why we didn't go in so much details with it but you know now the differences between it and the corresponding stepper motors okay okay that actually what i needed to tell you about those types the stepper motors and switch reluctance motor today just an overview about them and an open you the gate to go more deeper if you want to go more deeper about those kinds of machines okay 
Thank you guys for joining me even throughout the semester. I try my best to make those a lot of bit complicated uh, principles um, simple to digest and very attractive to look at. I tried my best with this. I tried my best to just present you the complex topic of electric machines as easy as possible and as straightforward as possible. Um, I really hope you find this course at all informative and you just get a lot of information out of it and you didn't regret actually enrolling in it and i hope this course will help you throughout your professional career and will help you more understand more principles of the other different topics of power systems control and product resources you may have depending on this course after this okay again my whole target for this course is making a good step towards understanding the very important topic of electric machines for the power systems control and power electronics engineers and for the other engineers maybe dealing with software and other it's a very good start to just unlock the black box of the electric motors you'll be using with your control systems and power electronic systems all over the time without knowing what's really happening inside um, of course i will be very happy to have all your questions even now or in the future about these topics and I hope I can help you with anything I can help with. Thank you so much for joining me throughout the course and throughout today's lecture. I hope you all the best with your final exams and with your the rest of your academic and professional life and yeah, thank you. <laughs>